Okay, folks, welcome back. So what I want to do in this video is I'm going to give you guys some more sizes on my little bench top pocket hole machine that I've made. And uh, for any of you guys who are just tuning in for the first time for this video, there's lots of other videos showing some demos of this thing and showing the basic construction of the underbox here. But I made a change uh, after I had the original made and changed the clamping mechanism. So that's what I'm going to cover in this new video here is just this new upper piece if you look through the bottom box all stays the same and there's lots of videos showing how to build that so this is just a little automatic pocket hole machine uh, similar to a, a Craig machine that uh, enables you to drill a hole and uh, and then all in one smash so now what I'll do is I'll get this thing apart and then I'll start giving you some sizes and how it goes together all right so there I got it all apart now so like I said if you look back, and I'll try to post some links in the in the video description, uh, the build of this basic box here, all that's going to stay the same. The only difference is, is we're going to have to add some pieces on the end. And this is just three quarter inch plywood. And what I did was, is this piece is two inches. And I believe, I did forgot to measure that, it's just overhanging just a little wee bit. About uh, three quarters of an inch overhanging the front of this uh, cabinet. And then what I did was, is I screwed... A couple more pieces to it just to build it up some um, and then what that'll allow us to do is to change this little fence here to change the position of the pocket hole and then all I did on the back side was is to just put these couple of supports on and then I, I actually screwed in through the edge here as you can see uh, to hook that on and you know it doesn't have to be fancy as long as it's screwed on is uh, is the most important part of that and then uh, now here's the major change in this uh, here's one of the changes is this rod used to be I believe 24 well now it's 27 inches long from the um, from the tip to tip is 27 and then you're going to want to drill a hole in the end of that three quarters of an inch down uh, on either end so that's where that will that's where that rod uh, that length of that changes and I've seen a few of you guys building some of these things and you guys are starting to try to use drawer slides and stuff. You're like, guys, uh, you don't need it. This melamine or a piece of plywood will work just as good and it's so much simpler to set up. Uh, I tried it with drawer slides and to be quite honest, I didn't like it near as much. With a, with a piece of melamine like this, it's probably the best set of slides you'll ever get. Um, so, you know, keep it simple, guys. If you guys are going to copy this, don't think that this won't last. I've got a machine over in the corner that uses that exact same concept, and it's five years old, and has drilled probably 50,000 holes, and it still works like the day I built it. So, um, so now I'll show you the next change. All right, so the next piece that you're going to want to make is this little piece here that the clamping mechanism gets hooked to. So, this board here, this is one part I forgot to measure is uh, two and a half inches wide and then it's just the length of the width of the machine now here's the the two mo uh, important pieces is you're going to want to make two blocks of hardwood five and a half inches wide or tall by five inches wide and then what i did was is i drilled a hole in it's in inch and a quarter and down one inch uh, through both of them of course and then this one here will be down four inches and in three quarters of an inch. Now I did, and I forgot to measure this. Um, I'm just going to check and see what it is to the bottom of this cut so then you'll know. So it's about four and a half. Somewhere's about four and a half. So it's come down about four and a half inches and then in the two and a half inches and just cut that little angle off. And what that'll do is that'll make it so that the clamp can open, right? Um, I did messing around with this try I had a hole in a different spot but it didn't quite work out so um, there's where that hole goes now and then this is going to get mounted on the top of the machine like so now not to confuse you this is this little piece that was in there that's for to change the position of the pocket hole so if I take that out and turn it sideways that's going to give me inch and a half from the fence to the edge of the pocket hole and then when I turn it down this way it gives me three quarters of an inch. Now with a different size spacer block, then I could change the position of that pocket hole uh, for different thickness of material. For doing inch and a half, I'm gonna wanna put it up like this. For doing three quarter or five eight, then I'm gonna wanna put it this way. And then like I said, I can make a different one. So I'll take that out. And, uh, and now what I'll do is I'll just quickly screw this down and we'll get on to the next little stage. So our next piece is this, uh, the piece that the clamp gets hooked to. And it's nine and a quarter inches long 
by one and a half inches wide. And then the thickness, as long as it's somewhere around three quarters, is great. And you're going to have to do drill two holes. Um, the first one is going to be back one and three quarter inches and, and just in the center. So back one and three quarter just in the center. And then the next hole will be from this end. We'll do everything from this end back six and five eighths. That's just a little bit better than six and a half. Six and five eighths back and same thing just in the center. Now we're going to have to cut an angle on this stick. And the angle is going to be what you're going to do is measure back two and a quarter inches. And you're just going to leave about a quarter of an inch here and just cut that angle off like I have right here. Now, for the clamp part of it, um, this little rubber piece on the end, I'll tell you what that is, folks, is that's a, actually a hockey puck. All I did was take a hole saw and, uh, and cut a piece, I think it's about an inch and a half around. And then what I did was is drilled a little bit bigger hole and just threaded this bolt right into the, the hockey puck. And then all I did was is drilled a hole just slightly smaller than this uh, this bolt and uh, and then all I did was is just to thread it in this is actually a piece of threaded rod is what it is because a bolts not threaded all the way and once you thread it in just uh, what I did was spray it with a little bit of WD-40 or a little bit of oil and then work it a little bit and uh, and eventually it'll thread in there re really really nice and that will give you your uh, adjustability for the thickness when this thing is in there uh, and if you make the bolt, I didn't measure this. I'll just, I guess I could give you that measure right now. Is uh, the bolt, I made it about four inches long total. And uh, and then just like I said, a hockey puck on the end. So now what I'll do is I'll just turn the camera and we'll stick this thing together. I guess I'll shut it off to keep the video um, short. I'll shut it off and stick this together. So our next piece is this back piece that's going to connect to the back rod. And what it is is just three pieces of hardwood and uh, it's 12 inches long is what they are. And this piece uh, underneath is two inches. Then you'll just need to cap it like I did um, right here. So this bolt hole here is down, I forgot to measure this, uh, is down about uh, seven eighths of an inch this one is. It's supposed to be three quarter. I aim to have everything at uh, three quarters so three quarter up from the bottom this one is centered but this one at the top it comes out about inch and a quarter from this back side and the reason why is when I put this in like this then what I want when that 45 that I cut on the end of this stick slides down in there then I want them holes to line right up it's going to be hard for me to get that camera shot uh, I want them holes to line right up so that it's comes it's tight there and then when I extend my handle you see It'll be able to rock back, but then when I put my handle down, it's gonna the the 45 is gonna come against the back, and that's how I'm gonna drill my hole, and that's how I gain a little bit of redundancy to open the clamp. So then this just gets attached to the back side of this rod, and I'll do that, and then I gotta figure out which one of these holes I'm using on this handle too, because I've drilled a few and changed this machine, and this is the same original handle. So I'll get that done, and then I'll turn the camera back on again. And I guess another little piece here is this little block that the springs get hooked to. And what it is, is it's three inches by two inch piece of hardwood. And I've just got a couple of holes drilled just in about uh, three quarters of an inch, three quarter by three quarter by three quarter, half inch holes for these little springs. Now I'm not going to take my springs out of there because what I did was, is once I tensioned them, I pulled them tight, pulled them tight, and then put a screw in behind like this. And then I ground them off. Um, once they were tensioned, I don't, I don't want these screws or these springs sticking out. So what I'm going to do is now, is I to put this back together, all I do is that gets set on the top like that. And then I'll just put some screws down through. I'm using these, these long drywall screws. I really like them. So that gets screwed down like that. And then all I do is use this little bolt like this. And then that goes through the back side of this little clamp here, like this. And then the other one goes to the other side. Now, here's another little thing that I did too, was once this was down, uh, once the, I had my springs tensioned, what I did was is I pulled this, you know, this is going to be tensioned like this, but I, I don't want my clamp to come way down like that. So what I do did was is I actually put just a screw here at... Uh, to, to stop that from opening anymore so there's you know when I pull back on my handle my clamps gonna open like this and then I'm gonna it's gonna ride against that screw there or we could put a bolt through it um, just something to stop it from going down any further 
So then, now, this gets put in place like this, and then my handle's gonna get put in place. So, I'm just gonna slide this in. I'm going to get my bolt run through my, my handle here. And then we'll just, by trial and error, I'll figure out which one of them holes is for the, uh, for the handle, because it should line right back up. So I'll just, and it's right there is the one. So I'm just gonna have to, so there, that'll get my machine working again. So now I'm just gonna pop this apart right quick, marking which screw hole that is. And I'll get that apart and give you the measure on this stick. All right, so this stick is 24 and a half inch, or 25 and a quarter inches long. And what I did was, is I just put a little bit of an a, or a 45 on this thing. Now this hole on the back side here, I have it, it's down three quarters of an inch from the top and in about two and a quarter from the end. So in two and a quarter from this end and down three quarter. And then this hole here is 19 and five eighths in and then just to the center of the stick. And then what this will do, then I can just slide this in like I just did, put my bolt in through the back. <laughs> I think that would just right there. That through there, and then this one goes through here, and then we're into drilling. So like I said, when you get yours done, you're going to have these springs. You're going to run them up through that hole. You're going to tension them. And I got them tensioned pretty good because uh, I can open this really easy because of the leverage here that I have. Um, and then because of the angle here, that's going to give you an incredible clamping capacity. You'll see when you get your machine set up. And then, like I said, now if I want to change the position, I can add this, turn it sideways or add a different thickness. And then I can change my thickness for thick, thicker material just by turning my plunger like this. So all in all, pretty darn cool machine. Uh, I'm real happy with the way this turned out. I am, when I get some more time, folks, going to rebuild uh, and make a brand new one. Making so that this is neatened up here so that the cabinet would just be a little wee bit longer. Uh, but right now, I've just got way too much kitchen work to do. and uh, But hopefully, you guys will be able to build your own machine like this. This one's dandy, even the rate right the way it is. And uh, hopefully you guys will be able to build your own. And, and hopefully you guys will send me some pictures showing yours made and, uh, and tell me how much you like it. So in my next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull something out from underneath the bench. I don't know how many of you guys have seen this rig before, but uh, I haven't had a lot of time to play with this. But this is my floating router mortise antenna machine. Uh, for doing mortise and tenons on the end of 2x6 or doing, uh, you know, just this thing will do crazy stuff. And uh, I haven't had a lot of time. I made it, did a few videos, slid it under the bench and never did nothing with it. But now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get this thing out. And we're going to we're going to really find out what this thing is capable of. And then I'm going to do some build videos on this because I know you guys want to build this as well. So hopefully you guys had fun watching. Hopefully you'll keep tuning in. And I thank you for watching this video and we'll see you next time.